CouchPotatoGM.com is the website. Couch Potato General Manager is a YouTube channel. You know it because you're on it. We are here to talk about the Miami Dolphins. We know you guys love your team. Hashtag fins up. Did I get it right? Hit me down in the comment section. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and the little bell. Just, little notification. Yeah, it has a little... Y'all know what I'm talking about. Just hit it and you'll know what I mean. We're going to talk draft recap. NFL 2019 draft recap of but these lovely, lovely Dolphins. Brian Flores is in. Who who was out? Adam Adam Gase? Yeah, that, that. He stayed in the East. That guy. Yeah, that, that oh, crazy, that crazy guy. guy. Oh, weird guy. <laughs> Come on. He was lost. He was following the taco. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, Brian Flores from New England. What was he? He was the D coordinator for, them last, uh, for the Patriots last year. Comes in and... and Blows Stephen Ross and crew away and gets the job and I'm 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 kind of happy for the Miami oh, Dolphins yeah. um, guy who's coming in bringing in a new culture that New England culture you know I know this team even with Adam Gates would give uh, the Patriots run for their money so now we find out how much more of a run they're gonna give the Patriots for their money but with the first pick overall they got Christian Wilkins man. Christian Wilkins, and when you think about Brian Flores, I'm going to read my notes right here, right off the notes. I could see Wilkins playing different roles on a defensive line for a team, specific, specifically to the ones that play multiple sets on defenses or Legos. This is just right after you right after you did your film study, before the draft. Yes, yes, yeah, this yeah. is what I saw. Listen, I, there was a lot of, 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 I like to call gamemanship up front mm -hmm. with, with the Clemson Tigers in terms of how they use the defensive linemen, whether, whether we're running, you know, stunts or, or what they call it, text game, twists, twists yeah. stunts, all that. Um, they did a lot slanting. of slanting and crashing, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. this man was at his best when he was going in either direction. You, 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 you let him at the snap go to either direction. There was not really anything that a, that a center, a guard, guard center, a tackle could do when he was coming their way. Um, to me, he was, he was strong at the point of attack. Um, I liked him at the three technique, personally, um, but... I think you can play anywhere, man, and, yeah. and and this is what we're talking about: multiple multiple sets in terms of defensive line, moving people around, and getting your people in the best position to succeed. And on third down, I think this dude is a a, a winner all the way. Yeah, man. You know, at the top, man, you mentioned the removal of Adam Gase, uh, bringing in Brian Flores, and I, I thought that the Dolphins had a, a culture issue with Adam Gase. He mm. was my way or no way. He rubbed some of his players the wrong way. Uh, you bring in a Brian Flores that's coming from New England that had. That has the best culture of all time. Clout. You know, and, and he's going to bring that, that that versatility to that defense, man. And Christian Wilkins, like you said, I've seen him at zero technique, one, three, five. He, he played all over the defensive line. So depending on the formations that the Dolphins are going to run, he, he can slide it anywhere. So, you know, and also what he does bring is a blue-collar player. So more culture players for Brian Flores and the Miami Dolphins. Uh, Christian Wilkins, man, he's quick off the snap, getting into the backfield. Check, running down the, the line, he, he's agile enough to get down the line to the edges. He's just a, he's just a, he's a terrific prospect. What I wrote in my notes was he does everything really good, but I don't know if he's exceptional at any one thing. Mm. Mm -hmm. And and I'm I'm gonna make an effort to only mention the Patriots once. That's the one time right there. So <laughs> you know clearly there are some parallels. Obviously mm -hmm. you know obviously being in the AFC East coaching staff, they bring in brought in the the receivers coach. Uh, as well to, to run the offense. As it pertains to Christian Wilkins, what he brings to the table, you know, you guys mentioned the blue collar. It's also the football IQ, mm -hmm. and that is that is something that is prioritized by that other organization. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're talking about doing this culture shift, you need guys who can, who can really play from the neck up. And then the other thing, Heather, you mentioned, there may not necessarily be anything he's exceptional at, and I'm referring to Christian Wilkins, but he does everything well. But that's the that's the focus, the, the fact that he's versatile and that it's about what he can do well, not necessarily what he can't do. You know what I mean? So when you when you talk about Brian Flores coming in, we're likely going to see a multiple set, any any number of variations in terms of downline. You can see a four three, a three four, a five two, a four four, whatever, sure. whatever. You're going to probably see it depending on the opponent. But you got to have the horses in, in order to be able to morph and change on the fly like that week yeah. to week, quarter to quarter, snap to snap. Mm -hmm. So Wilkins, Wilkins, considering what, what he can do from the neck up, his physical tools, the, the fact that he comes from a winning program, it's just it's just a, the, the perfect storm of a player in terms of a team that's really trying to change everything that's going on there. And, and most importantly... It's, this is this is the trenches, man. That, that's where games are won. You want to win from the inside out. You have to build from the inside out to have sustainable success. You'll have kind of that up and down, 
you know, we have a great, you know, 10 and 6 season, 11 and 5 maybe, and then, you, you know, you're, you're mired in 7 and 9, 6 and 10. But when you can control the line of scrimmage on either side of the ball, yeah. you can sustain success. Yeah, and you spoke about uh, that, that Clemson defensive line. You kind of mentioned a little bit. Um, Cleveland Farrell went number four to the Raiders. Mm -hmm. uh, excellent player there. Uh, there's some people that think Dexter Lawrence is better than Christian Wilkins, has a higher ceiling than him. But when you watch the tape game after game at Clemson, the offense paid attention to Christian Wilkins. They they, they they sent the double team over there. They wanted to take him out of the game. Right. So, you know, that speaks a, a volumes to the type of player Christian Wilkins yes. is. Yeah. Well done. There is no second round pick, but but why is there no second round pick? Because they went and they got their quarterback, and and they essentially, I don't know, to me they kind of stole him. Oh man, mm -hmm. the the maneuvering they did in the draft yeah. by trading down a second round pick yeah. and, and still trading for Josh Rosen, acquiring more picks for next year. I think another second round for next year. It was just magnificent, man. Mm -hmm. Josh Rosen, he got a bad deal last season. Playing under Mike McCoy's offense, the offensive line was terrible. They they. It was just bad over there, man. It's kind of like this the first year of Jared Goff when everyone thought he was terrible and he was the bust, biggest bust of all bust. time. Yeah. And, and he was in the Super Bowl last season. So Josh Rosen was our QB1 in 2017. We think he has a lot of talent. And we think the Miami Dolphins got a steal in Josh Rosen with this trade. Yeah, I, I think I think you're, you're going to have a, a substantial population of the fan base that is, you know, still thinking tank for Tua. Mm -hmm. You know, you know that they they would be elated if Trevor Lawrence was coming out in twenty twenty. That's not going to be the case, obviously. But but certainly they're still kind of thinking we don't have that guy. And really, it, it's going to take this organization. It's going to take patience in order to really. But if, if they if they plan on doing anything remotely similar to that that other team in the division mm -hmm. offensively, it's going to take time. There's no quarterback that you can just drop in and say go. Because it changes so much. You understand what I'm saying? Week to week, it changes so much. I think from a skill set perspective, being able to play from under center, neck up, work through progressions, you know, play with your back to the to the defense when you're running play action. I think I think if they nurture Josh Rosen, I think they could really this could really be the steal. We love the Christian Wilkins pick. This this could be the the, the, the okay. crown jewel. Now, obviously, the reports coming out of you know the the mandatory you know mini camps and whatnot is Ryan Fitzpatrick is out playing Josh Rosen. That doesn't surprise me. You know, right? Josh Rosen is getting situated. He's in a new place now altogether. He's not a wily veteran that's been around the block a few times. That's going to pick up on certain things a bit a little bit more yeah a, a little bit more quickly. I, but I but I think I think if if the Dolphins. Commit to Josh Rosen, and, and by commit is not throwing him any cash because he's on his rookie deal. Yep. So you have to worry about that. But commit to developing him. I think the benefits of making that move, getting him for a second round pick, can pay dividends in the long run. I, I think he's. I think he has that kind of ability. He's not going to wow you with athleticism. Obviously, you're going to have to protect him. Uh, building from the inside out, building those trenches up, improving on either side of the line of scrimmage. They have a long way to go. They have a long way to go. There's still a lot of work to be done, but I think this guy has the ability, assuming the, the pieces are in place and and there's actually some offensive know-how, which we anticipate there being, yeah. he can be successful. He can be really good. CPGM just had talked about uh, sustaining uh, a winning culture, mm -hmm. and by doing that, you build through the trenches. Absolutely. They did that with Christian Wilkins. Mm -hmm. also did that by you know going ahead and getting a day quarterback in the future, yeah. maybe, maybe yeah. not. We'll see. Uh, but you got to protect that quarterback, right? Absolutely. Uh, and, and they do that by going out and getting Wisconsin guard, third round pick, 78th pick overall, Michael Dieter, guard. Dieter, man. He's Downhill. Yeah. Punch you in the mouth. Yeah. Uh, Wisconsin. That's, Wisconsin that's, tough. That's, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, and that's what they do. And, and you call him a guard. He played tackle guard and center at Wisconsin. Yeah, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. But he, he sorry. probably is going to play guard for the Miami Dolphins. When I watched uh, Dieter's tape, I was I was highly encouraged uh, with, with with his play, man. This guy, I like how he disengages and gets to the second level. I like how he uses his hands. And you know, you, sometimes you have guys that they excel in the pass game and kind of weak in the run game, or excel in the run game. This guy's good in both pass and the run game, man. So he's effective in both areas. I think he's going to be a starter for the Miami Dolphins sooner than later. I agree. I got nothing else to add. I think he's a plug and play player right away. I don't know. Uh, yeah, because of the way. So 
So the way I look at this is it, it's the way that they want to uh, change the culture. It's part of the culture change is they want to run the football. They want to punch you in the mouth. I remember New England, they're one of the very few teams that uses a fullback. They're one of the very few teams who, I'm sorry, I'm using New England again. That's I, your I, I business. That. That my business. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to relate, you know, in terms of mm -hmm. the, the, mm -hmm. the mindset of what the Dolphins want to do. Sure. You know, and so we talking about, you know, teams running, you know, dime, dime defenses and nickel defenses, and that's 60, 70% of the defense as well. I'm going to put a fullback on the field. Mm -hmm. and I'm, we're going to run the football. We're mm -hmm. going to punch you in the mouth. You can you can leave that little nickel back out there if you want to, that dime backer out there. Okay, but just, 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 he's going to get ran through, yeah, yeah. And, and we're going to run the football. and and, and Make you come out of that nickel. Yeah. Exactly. And you, you bring up a good point, man. The Dolphins... You know, they, they want to run the football, and, and that sets up the pass game also. So it make, it's going to make things easier for Josh Rosen or Ryan Fitzpatrick, whoever is on the field, man. So definitely, definitely a good pick with Michael Dieter. High IQ player, mm -hmm. played a lot of uh, snaps at Wisconsin. So, yeah, man, this guy probably is a plug-and-play uh, guard for the Miami Dolphins. In the fifth round of the 151st pick, the Dolphins selected Andrew Van Ginkle. Ooh, I like that name, boy. Out of Wisconsin. Wisconsin what? Wisconsin tough. Outside linebacker. So in my notes I have here, I, I, I just, I got to read this. I can't, I, I need to, I need to. You can't paraphrase it. You got to read it. I got to read it because it's, read it. it's it, right. it, instinctual high motor who just finds the football is going to get to it any means necessary. Mm -hmm. He's not a guy who's overly fast, no. overly quick. Like He's none of that. He's just a guy who... Again, you're in this defense, it's Legos, it's plug and play. We're going to move you here because we, we want to do this, this game, or this play. We're going to put you in, in, in the most successful place we can put you on each play. If that's outside linebacker, that's what we're going to have you. If it's an end, that's what we're going to have you. So this is a guy who is one of those guys where he's going to stay on the field and he's going to be a guy who who is going to be counted on a lot because of, of his high motor, of his instincts, of finding the football, or just uh, wherever it's at, wherever sure. it's at. The Dolphins are trying to find their Kyle Van Noy. That, that, that's mm -hmm. what I look. That's that's the comparison I make with Van Ginkle. I know Van Ginkle's a little taller, more lanky. He probably had to hit in the weight room, get a little stronger. But versatility, man. I, I, this guy was on the edge. You know, he wins with effort over there. I seen him standing up inside linebacker, trying to shoot the A and B gaps. Uh, I seen him dropping the coverage, make an interception, score, uh, and take it to the house. So he's very aware in pass coverage. He just a lot of things well. We talked about Christian Wilkins that does a lot of things well in many different formations. And Ginkle is kind of the same type of guy. You'll hear us use the term Legos, you know, and that's what we affectionately refer to as a multiple defense, mm -hmm. you know. And, and without question, what Brian Flores was able to cook up this past season, mm -hmm. you know, throughout his career up north, I think that they're, that's, that's exactly what they're looking for. They're looking for guys who do certain things well. And then they will figure out, the coaching staff will, where to put them so that they can succeed. As you mentioned, Drew, put them in their optimal position to, to succeed. It's not going to be a, a round peg, square hole type of deal. You know, they're going to put you in a position. And, by the way, you're going to have to be able to play multiple positions. you got to have guys who have the, not only the physical tools, but the intelligence to manage that as well. And also, Van Ginkle was a, a special team star at Wisconsin also. So, more versatility added to him. That, no, instinctual high motor. I mean, that speaks to special teams, period. That don't surprise me one, one, one bit. Sixth round, 202nd pick. The Miami Dolphins selected offensive tackle Isaiah Prince out of Ohio State. Uh, you know, watching this guy, oh, man. we talked about it earlier in terms of offensive linemen. They're good at the pad, the, the run blocking, but they're not so good at the pass blocking. They're good at the pass blocking, they're not so good at the run blocking. This is one of those where I thought that he was good at the pass blocking as long as he got back, got his anchor. But the run blocking, it wasn't bad. Just there was no nasty. There was no there was no push. Yeah. So, but he he always did enough to let let his running back through or or whatever he was supposed to do. He he got the job done enough. But there wasn't enough nasty. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if he has that nasty that. And that's not something you could teach. That's something that's just in here instinctually. Whatever it is, I don't know if you know. I don't know. I don't know where it comes from. But he was lacking that. But he he, he always he always did enough. Yeah, Isaiah Prince, man. The Dolphins, it's, it's, it's a trend now. Mm -hmm. they're, they're getting a lot of experience in this draft class, man. A lot of these guys have been stars. a lot of stars, a lot of, a lot of snaps, mm -hmm. and Prince is no different, man. What I can say about Prince, I, uh, as, a, as a pass protector, he, he's improved every season at Ohio State, so he, he's getting better. But he has some, has some pad level issues, you know, his base, his leverage. He gets a little too high in, in, on his pad level, so he just needs to improve that in his game, but... 
He has the length. He has the physical tools. And, yes, he is missing that nastiness that, that you said. So with Juwan James, you know, obviously exiting stage left. You know, you got Jordan Mills in there now. Um, Prince, the aforementioned Prince, to kind of figure out what you're going to do opposite Laramie Tunsil here. Yeah. And, of course, again, we've talked about if you got to build from the inside out, get your trenches situated. We always refer to the offensive line as being the most important position group on the roster. Period. So Prince obviously has some upside in terms of pass blocking. We will see if he continues to develop in terms of the run blocking aspect of things. At a minimum, he serves as kind of your swing tackle, provides some depth there. So, And, and one thing that I've noticed, you mentioned it, that being a trend obviously addressing the, the trenches is the fact that a lot of these players are coming from you know quality programs with very good coaching, playing against upper-tier competition. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, again, when, when we refer to, to culture, not only are you trying to get more physical and control the line of scrimmage, but you also want guys who have a ton of starts, a lot of experience, leadership, yeah. or have had, you know, approached the highest levels of success at the collegiate level as they transition into the NFL. Absolutely, absolutely. In the seventh round, the 233rd pick, the Dolphins selected Chandler Cox, fullback out of Auburn, and, and I have here, he, he's an underrated player, can be used both in run and pass game, and I, he he reminds me, I'm not going to say he reminds me of, but I, I have an idea that he's going to be used in, a, in various ways, um, and I think that he is the James Devlin of the Miami Dolphins. More Patriots, man. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm, <laughs> listen, I'm sorry, but I'm, we, we, we try to get W's out here, fins up. Yeah, and, and you know what? You mentioned the Patriots. I'm going to say the Patriots again. <laughs> and it's a Patriots approach, man. Patriots are one of the few teams that, that plays with a fullback. There's some other teams out there, but the Patriots does it more than most teams. And... Fullbacks are people too, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I had to use a phrase, man. Yep. Shout out to Jeff Lavelle, man. And, and Cox just gives 110% effort. Yep. He, he, he just gives energy. He, he's going to give his all on every single snap. I think he's more of a, a zone blocker. He, he takes good angles more than more than a power guy. Yeah. Did you see him on the No, he, he has power. No, he, I put, he's a physical guy that likes contact. Yeah, he does. But I don't know if he's... Bull rushing people. Just, just give me. I need. Just yeah. give me. Give it to me at the two yard. You need an inch. I, I'll get you two inches. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you mentioned Devlin, but are there Lorenzo Neals anymore? You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, like, 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 like if yeah. it's a fullback, I'm excited. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't have the classic neck roll guys too much anymore. That don't really exist anymore. But if 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 it's I, if it ain't a tight end that trying to H back, trying to masquerade as a fullback, I'm excited. So I, I like the pick just from that perspective. Yeah, man, it just makes more sense with the Dolphins mm -hmm. draft, man. Getting Cox, Dieter, mm -hmm. Prince, they they, they want to run football, physical, experience. Cox was a four year starter yeah, as well, yeah. more experience. Yeah. Yeah, man, in high school he played he played in the slot, played played halfback, but you know low receiver. I mean, hey, underrated man. athlete. That's, that's, that's all versatility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The versatility is a new position. Mm -hmm. I be trying to tell them they don't want to listen. What is it, spider wide banana? What is it? Yeah, yeah spider wide banana. Yeah, yeah. John Gruden. Yeah. Hit him in the flat. Hit him in the flat. Let's go. Mm -hmm. You don't know? Look it up. All right, man, with, with the next pick in the seventh round, the 234th pick, they selected Miles Gaskin, running back out of Washington, four-year starter? Yeah. What? What? Uh, he was supposed to be the next coming or something. What What? What happened? He's small, but he's very competitive. He's very tough. He, he tries to gain extra yardage. Uh, his knocks will be his pass protection. Um, sometimes he tries to do a little too much dancing in the backfield, could, could create negative yardage. But, you know, he's, he's just a depth piece. You know, the, the star running backs right now is uh, Drake and, and Balich and Balage. Gaskins. Balage. There we go. And, and, and uh, Gaskins would be, just be a depth piece for the Dolphins. I think he, he and Ron Dane are the only running they backs. They don't know who. They may not know who. He and Ron Dane are the only <laughs> running backs in FBS history with 1,200-plus yards in four seasons. Um, so, again, a ton of production. Mm -hmm. I, I, think, I think this pick... I'm, I'm trying to, obviously, I'm thinking of the parallels I'm seeing in terms of where Brian Flores came from. Uh, don't say, and, say it. No, I'm not going to say it. Okay. Um, he could carve out a role. He could carve out a role because we don't know what, what Drake's future is going to be long term there. You know what I mean? Um, he's going to have to, obviously, contribute on special teams to make the team. So it, it remains to be seen. It remains to be seen. Again, you mentioned it. This, this guy has great effort. He's an intelligent player. He has some weaknesses, obviously, but it's about what you can do. Yeah. Yeah. With with these guys, with, yeah. with this new regime, it's it's less about what you can't do and more about what you can do. So we'll see. 
right, so we want to talk about a, a, a few UDFAs. Uh, there's two linebackers. You know, the, the Flores loves his linebackers, and Terrell Hanks from New Mexico, New Mexico State. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Trey Watson from Maryland. We got a chance to see him at the, the Shrine game, and he was flying all over the field making plays, man. So definitely a talent there. And the same could be said for Hanks at the Senior Bowl. You know what I mean? His, his counterpart on, I guess, on the other on the other team, uh, Coney out of Notre Dame, obviously showed as well. But you know, outside of that that forty, which he pulled up a little lame, I think that cost him being drafted. But I, I think Hanks is a steal wherever you get him. I think he's a steal. I think he has that ability, and I think he's going to make a difference as soon as this season as a UDFA. Mm. Uh, praise. Definitely, man. Culture change in Miami. Down there with Steven Ross and Brian Flores. Again, I'm happy for the Miami Dolphins. Um, I hope you guys do take down the Patriots. I'm tired of seeing these guys. But um, Ben's up, man. Let us know how you feel about your draft. What pick do you like the most? What pick don't you like at all? Um, how do you feel about your coach? Um, and don't forget to hit the subscribe, like, comment button. And also, man, spread the word, man. We, we want to talk to other Dolphins, man. Don't be selfish. Because a lot of people out there be selfish. They want to keep the good things to themselves. Don't spread the word. Man. Man,